In my final year of university, I remember sitting at my desk preparing for my next set of exams when suddenly I received the call. And it was the recruiter from PwC. And after a brief chat of small talk, she finally told me that I had received an offer to join them on the graduate scheme. I remember feeling absolutely ecstatic. I was so happy, so much work had gone into this process. It was such a great sense of relief. And I felt great until a sudden realization hit me. A week earlier, I'd been in a similar situation, sat at my desk revising for my exams when I received a similar phone call. But this time, it was from BDO offering me a place on their graduate scheme. And I remember having various conversations with my parents, friends, people that worked at BDO, people that worked at PwC, reading multiple online forums, just to try and understand which would be best for me. Do you go for the well-trodden path of the big four firms, or do you join an up-and-coming challenger firm? So in this video, we're gonna compare, contrast, and review the differences between the big four and challenger firms. Is bigger always better? Does size really matter? I was gonna come up with this really elaborate score system but two things stopped me firstly I couldn't be bothered and secondly you know keep it simple simple is always best so with seven categories there are seven points up for grabs the big four in the mid tier whichever has the most points at the end of the video is the winner I have also prepared a summary document so there should be a link appearing maybe up here or there definitely be one down in the description click the link sign up and there'll be a one or two page document outlining the key points of this video but anyway we've spoken enough about the theory the elements the scoring links let's dive into the actual video across both big four and mid-tier firms, both career paths internally are clearly visible in terms of your route from joining as an associate, working to a manager, becoming a director, and ultimately a partner. So there's not too much difference really within that kind of linear internal structure, but there's various other routes and elements you can take that do have some differences. So the big four firms provide a hell of a lot of different opportunities for you to take a variety of different career paths internally and specialize in a variety of areas such as technology, analytics, Analytics, mergers and acquisitions, business transformation, corporate finance. So you can really tailor your career to areas you're interested in. mid tier firms also do have this variety of career progression areas you can go into, but they're not really known for their deep expertise or specialisms compared to the big four. So you can carve out a more kind of niched career path within these particular specialisms at the big four compared to mid tier firms two-thirds of FTSE 100 CFOs, so chief financial officers, were X big four. You're more likely to be in these positions if you come from a big four background. Because of that name drop on your CV and the presence and allure that the big four names have, it can be slightly easier to secure some jobs. Another element of why people choose the big four is because of the international opportunities, the opportunities to do secondments to a variety of offices. Several of my friends went to Australia, New Zealand, America, and that was fairly common practice. And you can do these opportunities as well at the mid-tier firms. However, their global scale isn't as large. There's not as frequent free transfer of internal resources, you know, between these countries. So why not very various elements such as internal progression, the ability to specialize into a variety of niches, the exit opportunities and opportunities for internal kind of transfers or secondments, I'm gonna to have to give the point to Big Four. So while we're on the topic of international transfers, I wanted to share with you guys an app I've been using over the past couple of months and who have decided to sponsor today's video. As you can see from the decorations behind me, it's Christmas and I wanna send my mate in Australia a small gift and I'm gonna send them 20 pounds. I'm feeling generous, 40 pounds. Now, there's two options for this. Option A, which is using the traditional financial institutions like your bank. It's slow, complicated, and expensive, so it's not the right thing to do. Or there's option B, which is fast, easy, and low cost. It's a bit of a no-brainer. In less than 30 seconds, using the PaySend app, you can send money to anyone in the world. So we're gonna fire up PaySend and press send. We're gonna type in Australia. There it is. Gives you a couple of options, either bank account or to the card. We're gonna go for bank account. We're gonna type in the amount of money we want to transfer and we're gonna get 74 Australian dollars. We're gonna press continue. Now I'm not gonna show you the bank account details because I don't want you to see those and I'm sure my mate doesn't either. And that's it, as simple as that. But don't just take my word for it. If we look at the reviews on Trustpilot, you'll see there, look, how many reviews and that rating, it's a no-brainer. 
So I highly recommend you use Paysend. If you go into the description of the video, you'll see a link to where you can download or create an account at Paysend. If you use the code JAMESFREE, you'll also get several free transactions. Now, the next category we consider is all about salary and remuneration. Typically, at the graduate starting position, there isn't really too much difference between the big four and mid-tier firms. You could probably expect maybe 10% more or up to 10% more at the big four. Most graduate schemes start at around 28 to 30,000 pounds. So when we say 10% more, we're talking two to three grand. It's not really a fair comparison because you're only looking at the outputs, AKA the salary, compared to the inputs required to get that salary. So typically you are paying paid slightly less at the mid-tier firms, but you work slightly less as well. So it kind of evens out. You start to see some significant differences up at the partner level. At Grant Fortin, the average partner pay, I think last year in 2020 or 2021, was around 400,000 pounds, a pretty decent paycheck. But at the big four, that range can be anywhere, depending on your status, between 500 and 800K. So you're gonna be earning a hell of a lot more as a partner in the big four firms, just due to the larger scale and increased kind of profit pool compared to the mid-tier firms. But once again, you will be working a hell of a lot more to to get to that stage. If you look at the total package and you weigh it up on both the outputs in terms of benefits and salaries and matters like that, compared to the inputs, hours, time and commitment, they're pretty even, I'm gonna be honest. They're pretty even, so it's gonna be a draw. It's gonna be a point for each. If you're looking to work with the largest companies that have global scale and household brands, Big Four is definitely gonna be the choice for you. They, in the UK, audit 100% of the FTSE 100, so the 100 largest companies in the UK, and they also audit 90% of the FTSE 250. So they pretty much, with a few exceptions, audit the 350 largest companies in the UK between them. If we look at the S&P 500, so the 500 biggest public companies in America, all but around six are audited by the big four. So if we switch across to the challenger firms, the mid-tier firms, they're gonna be really focused on that bulky middle market. To be honest, they don't really have the global scale or insurance liability to audit some of the larger companies. So they really don't tend to bid to be involved in those audits. They really focus on dominating this mid-market niche. But if you want to work on global companies with household brands name, it's gonna be the big four. So we're gonna give one point to the big four. the big four is notoriously bad in terms of its working hours. It's pretty busy throughout the whole year and obviously extremely busy in busy season for the auditors. If you want an insight into the kind of hours you'll be working at the big four, there should be another video of mine linked up here called the big four cons or the truth about the big four in which I talk about my experience and my hours in a general work week and also the busy season. One of the reasons people choose a mid-tier firm over the big four is typically for an improved work-life balance. I'm not saying it's completely easy. I'm not saying it's gonna be a nine to five job every single day, but it's gonna be a lot less intensive in terms of the hours compared to the big four. And that's due to a variety of factors, you know, culture, which we explore in a bit more detail, but also the size of the clients because they're smaller clients in terms of global scale, they can be slightly less complex, requiring less time and resources. And generally there's just a bigger focus on well-being at these firms. Big four have invested a lot of money in various well-being initiatives, apps, to promote mindfulness and well-being but to be honest it feels a bit of a tick box exercise rather than a genuine care but hey I could be wrong but overall weighing it up I'm going to give this one to the mid-tier firms at both the big four and the challenger firms they will provide you with professional qualifications the end result in terms of becoming a chartered accountant or whatever path you follow is exactly the same but there are some minor differences in the journey you go through the big four for example follows a more rigid and structured approach to the exams whereas the mid-tier firms give you a lot more flexibility and adaptability to the paths and when you want to take the exams and also your exam performance so if you want to get through your exams extremely quickly with some well-funded research resources, Big Four is probably the place to go. But if you want a more tailored, adaptable approach that's probably a bit kinder in terms of your work-life balance as well, I'd recommend the mid-tier firms. In a lot of the recruitment material for the Big Four, they often boast about their internal learning platforms. They're similar to kind of a Udemy or Skillshare style structure. You can go onto a platform or a portal, type in what you want to learn, and there'll be a videos or some course on it. From personal experience of trying to use these, I wouldn't say they're that great, to be honest. 
I think I've learned more from just searching videos or issues or problems or areas I was interested in into YouTube and these platforms, but maybe I've overlooked something. If you switch across to the mid-tier firms, they do have similar resources, but they're not as well funded. But given the quality of what I've seen at the big four, I don't imagine the quality at the challenger firms, to be honest, will be any worse, better, or it's probably pretty much gonna be the same. But weighing up the various factors, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to say it's a draw. So it's one point for each. This is mainly going to be focused on the responsibility you get in your day-to-day -day role, the responsibility you get with your clients. And it's kind of a bit blended and merged with learning, which is another category, but I thought I'd pull this one out separately. A big upside to one of the mid-tier firms is you'll get a lot more exposure to wider areas of the project, and you'll get that exposure and responsibility earlier on. So because the clients are slightly smaller, they're slightly less complex, in some cases not at all, you would actually have a broader overview of the whole business. You can see the whole process end to end. you also be given more managerial responsibility and more interaction with the clients earlier on. This high level of responsibility and oversight of the end-to-end -end business and also managing that kind of client relationship more, particularly at the junior levels, gives you a greater sense of ownership over the work. So for the big four, because you're working with the largest companies in the world, they're typically more complex, they have global scale, rather than working across every single area of the project or audit, you'll typically be allocated or specialized in one particular kind of focus area. So for example, for me, across two of my main clients, which were both listed, entities one was a fast-moving consumer goods company or a foods company and the other was a software company I was focused mainly on revenue and some judgmental areas such as impairment tax and going concern and those are the areas I worked on year after year gaining more and more responsibility and it obviously had its pros and cons it was really good for appreciating these areas and getting some deep specialism within them but in terms of understanding the whole kind of end-to-end -end process or the clients business I couldn't really tell you clearly or in simple terms how they worked. I was so focused on this one particular area that sometimes you lose sight of the bigger picture. If you'd rather be a specialist in particular areas or particular industries, the big four is probably best for you. But if you'd rather be a generalist, you know, having experience, broad experience across a variety of clients, the mid-tier firms are probably better for you. But it's going to be a draw. I'm going to give a point to each. What do we mean by culture? It's really the values, beliefs, and behaviors of the companies. It's the way things are done. So the big four firms also expect their employees to progress. And because of this, people are constantly looking for promotion opportunities and other initiatives they can join to demonstrate they're ready for that next jump upwards. So the expectations are high, and this can lead to a very competitive environment, which can be quite tough for some people. From my experience as well, working at the big four, there is very much a culture of kind of work Working long hours a lot of people wear hours or time they spend in the office as kind of like a badge of honor this leads to people just needlessly spending a lot of time in the office just to show you know they're working in the office it's like the hours don't equal productivity I read this article from the Financial Times a couple of years ago and I think it summarized it quite nicely it was said if you're an insecure overachiever the big four is for you I'm not saying that applies to everyone at the big four but I'll link the article in the description below I found it to be pretty accurate actually the, describing the culture and elements like that if you look at the mid-tier firms, it's more described as supportive environments. So for example, rather than being so hell-bent on progression and advancement and achieving, those elements are there, but they're just not the priority factors. Because it's not as rigid or structured compared or relative to the big four, it can feel less corporate -y. It can feel more open and more transparent. So there's obviously pros and cons of those two different cultures, and there's not a one-size-fits-all. You can't say to you, for example, big four is better or mid-tier is better because it's so subjective and it depends on your personal circumstances so if you think you'd excel in an environment that's very advancement and progression and high pressure and very competitive then big four is probably best for you if you're an individual that's kind of relatively less focused on that and it's more focused on kind of openness and transparency and a less corporate structure mid-tier firms will still be for you so because of that it's gonna have to be a draw it's gonna be a point for each Whichever path you choose, both the big four and the mid-tier firms will provide you with a vast variety of opportunities that will really kickstart your career. Personally, I think mindset really determines how fast you progress and how far you go in your career, more so than any big four first mid-tier decision or any of these several factors we've discussed. I have done a video on my channel of how I progressed quickly at the big four, so I recommend you check that out. Check out the summary document that outlines the key points of this video. There might be a link up here, but definitely one down below. 
below and also check out my channel for a variety of other tips on the application process how to succeed exit opportunities mental health and various things like that but anyway until next time